Hi, I'm Lance Schrader, Customer Technology Specialist out of our Marysville location. And I'm glad that you can join me as I go over many planner settings. If you have any questions after these videos, please contact your local landmark location. So looking at a seed trench after we've gone through, tied the closing wheels up in this example here, but this is what a good seed trench looks like. So we have some firm sidewalls. It's defined. It's not crumbled in. If I would take and kind of stick my seed digger down in there, it kind of comes in here. So it's not just totally compacted and not hard. Obviously soil conditions and soil types will affect this, but this is what we want to see for good seed to soil contact. And that gives our seed the best chance at producing maximum yield. An example of too little downforce is when the seed trench just pretty much crumbles really easily and you can push it in. So there's chances of pockets of air and not very good seed to soil contact and more importantly probably not achieving your correct depth. Another good way of checking downforce at the planter is by getting out with the planter in the ground and checking to see the resistance on the gauge wheel. So if it spins easily like this with not much effort, that means we probably don't have enough downforce. If we come back here and we can't spin this at all, it's just really firm, that's a chance that we have too much downforce. Kind of what we want to see is where we can spin this, but with some good resistance. I want to go through some screen operation for set point downforce. If your planner has the Seedstar XP with just set point downforce, this is how it's ran. First, we go to the on the main planner page, we'll go to the bottom left button. And then we'll touch our target. So this is our target set point. And we can increase or decrease to our desired level. Then hit the arrow to the right. And then our actual value will increase or decrease compared to what we have our target set at to match. If we want to look at ride quality, if your planner has the ride quality sensors, that's this button on the bottom row. And we want those bar graphs to be close to the top. We want to see our ride quality in the mid 90 to high 90, if not 100% range. If not, we probably need more downforce or speed can also play a factor. We may need to slow down a little bit depending on field conditions. We can look at certain rows by hitting the third button on the bottom row and type in which row we want to look at accordingly and it will give us our downforce. A couple other things if you're planner does have those sensors, we can come over here to tab G and go to sensor. And then in the drop down list, we find downforce. So depending on the planner that you have will depend on the number of sensors. And we want to make sure that they are enabled. And these numbers down here for each sensor should have a value. If it has dashes, that means it's either disabled or that sensor is offline and not working. So that can be used as a diagnostic tool. If it is enabled and it still has dashes, sensor could potentially be bad or have a bad connection. If the planner is up and the load still shows a value other than zero, you can zero these out and that will refresh those sensors and recalibrate them to zero. 
We also have our ride quality. And the same thing there, we wanna make sure there's a value there as well as they are enabled. 